Hello and welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skid Vitz. This little thing right here is called the Bug Assault. It's a cool little weapon. Uh, you put salt in here and then you pump it up like a water gun and you point it at a bug and it shoots salt at it and kills it. I don't know why I bought this, but today we're going to talk about bugs. What do you do when you're on the quest and you have a bug? We're going to cover that, but first, make sure to like and subscribe or else. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here we are back in Unity and we're picking up right where we left off last time. So if you are new to this series and you want to catch up, go follow the link to get to the previous episode where we set everything up. Now, before I start, um, I want to cover a few things that I've been getting some questions on. Um, generally, people are asking how I can play from inside Visual Studio with my Quest 2. And in order to do that, we're using uh, Oculus Quest Link, which lets your uh, Oculus Quest pretend to be a Rift. Um, so I'll put a link in the descriptions if you don't know how to set that up. But that's how I'm controlling this from uh, my headset. So we want to make sure to have the Oculus software installed because Link won't work without that. So we've got that up and running. And um, we also want to have Visual Studio installed, which if you installed uh, Unity, it should have installed by itself. But if it didn't, you need Visual Studio. And of course, like last week, you need to make sure to have your Android uh, install set up with Unity as well. So if you've got all that, everything should work as we're doing here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just do some scripting for a little bit here just to um, cover debugging. So let's go ahead into our assets folder here and we'll just create a new folder and we'll call it scripts. And then in there we will create a new C sharp file and we will just call this crab. Okay, and then we'll double click it and it should open up Visual Studio and we can start coding. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger just so it's easier to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a variable up here that we're gonna use. Um, it'll be an integer and we will just call it count. And then we will go down here. Actually, we're not gonna use these methods, so I'm gonna delete them. And then I will create a new method, which is going to be public void, and I will call it do something. And inside this method, um, all we're going to do is increment that count. So we'll do count plus plus. That will add one to the count variable every time this method is executed. And then we will just debug dot log count. And that will just print the value of count every time this method is called. Very simple method. Um, if you don't understand it, then you might want to do some research on C Sharp. Um, but basically, it's just creating a variable called count, incrementing that variable in a method, and then printing that value out to the screen. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll go back into Unity. And we will attach this script to the sphere. So we'll select the sphere collapse all this stuff down, go to add component, uh, find the script we just created, grab, and there it is, it's attached to it. So the next thing we wanna do is trigger that method. And the way we're gonna do it is by using the grab interactable. So what we're gonna do is every time we pick up the ball, we're going to increment that number. And this XR grab interactable has some events interactable events down here. So if you open that up, 
you'll see a list of all these different events on first hover, on hover enter, on hover exit, on last hover exit, blah, 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 blah. So the one we're gonna use is on select enter. So when you hit that trigger button and pull the ball in, that's called the select. So we want this event to fire whenever you pull that trigger and grab the ball. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to add an event to this, or a method to this event. So we'll hit the plus sign there, and it's gonna look for, it's gonna ask us for an object to pull the methods from. So we're going to drag the sphere into that, even though it's on the sphere. Um, once we do that, this section up here with the functions opens up and shows us all of our options that we could actually use. It's gonna use any available method or uh, event that is inside the sphere. And if you look down here, you see grab, which is the one that we created. And there's a method in there called do something, which we created. And so we'll just select that. So now every time we hit the trigger button on this and select the ball, um, it will run this method grab dot do something. So let's go ahead and put on our headset and run this. And you should see a counter appear down here every time I grab the ball. Okay, so here we are, I'm running the game on the PC and uh, I'm wearing the headset and it's pretending it's a Rift and so that's why I can interact with it uh, from the computer. So as you can see, we're hovering over the sphere and the debug log is showing nothing. But once I squeeze the trigger and bring the ball over, now you can see that Unity log says one. And if I drop it and pick it back up, now it says two. And I could do this all day as long as I don't lose the ball. And everything is working as expected. Now this is great while you're working on the PC. Um, you can easily debug from inside of here. Uh, you can add a breakpoint in Visual Studio. And what a breakpoint does, as the name implies, it stops execution, it breaks it. So for instance, if I click here in this little gutter here, you'll see it puts a red dot. So that means whenever this method gets executed and it gets to this line, it will freeze. And then when it's there, we can inspect things and see what the values of things are um, and manipulate it and see where our problems are for having any problems. So we'll go ahead and up here, go to attach to Unity. We'll hit attach to Unity and play and then what it'll do is it'll start Unity for us and uh, attach to it to make sure that we can debug it. So there's the ball. And once I grab this, as you can see, time has stopped. It seems to be locked up. And that is because, oh, you can't see that, because it has actually brought us into Visual Studio um, and this little yellow arrow means time is frozen. We are right here. So we can actually hover over count and see what its value is. You can see count is one. Uh, we could open this up and do more things. If there was more to see, you can hover, see, as you can see, hover there over count. Um, there's a bunch of automatic uh, variables that appear down here. So you can see there's the count variable with a value of one and it's a type integer. And in this case, this is the sphere. So if we were to mention this in anywhere, anywhere in our code, we would be referencing the sphere. And we can open that up and see all of the properties that are available to us for the sphere. We can see its tag, its transform, all this cool stuff that lets us debug when we have issues. So now we can uh, either hit continue to keep playing and it'll take us back into the game. And again, if I pick up the ball, it'll freeze and take us back into Visual Studio. And now you can see that count is equal to two. Um, so everything is running as we expect. So we are good to go there. Goodbye, ball. Um, and now I'll just stop it. So we, we know how to debug now inside of Visual Studio on the computer. That's great. But what if 
you don't have access to Visual Studio or uh, Link isn't working on your computer, you don't have a, a high enough quality video card or um, you don't have the right kind of cable or whatever. Um, or, or this is what recently happened to me, uh, everything was working fine on the PC side. But since I was dealing with file systems and a file system is different between Windows and Android, I was having issues only on the Android side. So there has to be a way to debug things directly on the device. And that's what we're going to cover. So what we'll start off by doing is um, making sure that we know the path to um, our SDK tools for Android. So we go into edit and preferences in Unity and under external tools, if we scroll down, we'll see all this Android stuff down here. And this one we're looking for here is Android SDK tools. So if this isn't looking right for you, then you probably did not install the Android tools. You need to have those on there for this to be in there. So we can just copy this path here and then open that in our file explorer here. And in here you see a bunch of stuff and we're looking for this platform tools. And in there, you're going to find this ADB. And this is our debugging and uh, it's basically it's Android's file transfer and connection system to the computer. So we'll just minimize that for now and close this out. And so the next thing we want to do is put this on the device. So we'll go to file, um, build settings, and we want to create a debug version of this application. So we want to make sure to have this development build checked and script debugging checked, which are usually off by default. Um, so you'll need to turn those two on manually. And when you do that, it's going to take longer to build because it's adding more support stuff. Um, and it's not a release build. So uh, just hit the build button and save it somewhere on your computer. I'm saving it on my desktop as testme.apk. And we'll just wait for that to finish. Okay, we have finished. And uh, another thing we could have done is if you look in this default list here, you should see your device plugged in there. So if your device is showing up, you can go ahead and hit build and run and it will do the build and then deploy the application to your device and then start it on your device. Um, and that's probably what you'll end up doing once you get in the flow of building things like this. Um, but for now, we're just gonna do a manual copy like we did last time. So let me go ahead and open up the Oculus Developer Hub over here. And then I will uh, find my device and copy that file over there manually. Um, I've got the old version of it. So I'm going to delete the old version just to make sure there's nothing there. And then I will open a new window here. And we will just drag this in here and install it that way. Cool. And then um, I'm going to close this because I don't think if I cast from this device that I could do the debugging. So I'm going to just close this back up and uh, I'll do the rest of the recording from the device once we're ready for that. Uh, so now we need to go ahead and set up our debugging. And the way we do that is through this path, this ADB tool here. So what we need to do is open up a command line in this folder. So you can either open up a command prompt and CD your way to this folder. Um, I have uh, git bash installed, so I can just open that there and it will open a command prompt for me. So once you're in this folder, you can type in ADB or if you have it in your path, you can just type in ADB anywhere and make sure that it runs. You should get this message here to show that it's running right. So here's where we're going to do our magic. We'll do ADB TCP IP 5555. Now what this is going to do is it's going to basically uh, tell the ADB service to use T 
TCP IP, which is an internet protocol, um, and then open up this port called 5555, which we're gonna use to debug. So once we hit this, it should give us a message. There we go, that we have switched to 5555. And then we need to know the IP address of our headset. So if you don't know how to get that, I will show you. So apparently they don't want you to screen grab your Wi-Fi information. So what you need to do is go into your settings and go to Wi-Fi and I click on it, but the screen will stop recording if I do. Um, and then once you're in there, go scroll to your, well, click on the network that you're on. So in my case, it's skidbiz.com. So if you are click on your network and if you scroll to the bottom, there's an advanced section. If you open that up, and scroll down a little more, you'll see your IP address. I wish I could show you, but this won't let me capture it. So, once you know your IP address, in my case, it's 192.168.1.153, but for you, it's of course gonna be different. Um, you'll need to remember that so that you can do the next step. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open up that command prompt I had, and we are going to connect to that IP address. So we type in ADB, connect and punch in that IP address 192.168.153 of course that IP address will be different for you and as you can see we are connected so now we go to Visual Studio and it is still debugging our last instance, so we'll stop that. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pop on the headset. So okay, here we are in the app, everything is looking good. So now we're gonna go ahead and go into Visual Studio and we'll go to debug and then attach Unity debugger up here in the menu. And we should get this little window that has a bunch of different things we can connect to, and we should see Android Player, Oculus Quest, and then your IP address. So if we click on that and hit OK, that will attach the debugger to your app. So now back in the device, if I go ahead and pick up the ball, you can see now that it freezes. But it's not uh, broken or anything, it's literally kicked us back out into the debugger and is waiting for us. So here we go, just like when we did it in Visual Studio on the PC, we are at a break point here and we are debugging. So if we hover over the count, you can see it's one. If we inspect all these items, it's just like when we were on the PC. And just the same way, we can hit continue and now the game has resumed and I've lost the ball because it rolls away. There it goes. Now I'm gonna catch it again and you see time has frozen again and we are back in another debug and of course the ball count is two now. We have two balls as we should and if I continue the game resumes. I've lost the ball again Probably shouldn't make something that rolls. No, I lost it. Okay, so as you can see, everything works as it should. And there you have it. We squashed some bugs and I spilled my drink. What more can you ask for? If you've enjoyed this episode, uh, please make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, join my Discord, become a Patreon subscriber, uh, all that good stuff. Let me know in the comments what you want to see in the next video. Uh, I've got teleporting lined up on the queue, so stay tuned for that. Until the next time, I'm still Skidvis. Peace out.